Okay everyone, so let's just get right into it. First thing I'm going to do is apply my oils. So I like to have a medium on my skin to help the stones glide better. Totally up to you what you wanna use. Um, if you're able to use oils, I recommend these oils. They have a lot of properties that I find beneficial for my skin or that I have found beneficial in the last little while. This is jojoba oil. And I'm going to mix jojoba oil and some rosehip oil. So they are both from Amazon. I will have them linked down below for you guys if you wanna check them out. And they do come in pretty large sizes, so they are going to last a while. I'm just taking some of the jojoba oil into my palm. You can do as much as you find necessary. I like to do a good amount, but not too much. If I need more, I'll go back in. And then same thing, I'm just gonna do a little bit of the rosehip oil and I'm going to just mix them together in my palms and I'm going to press them into my face. If you want to rub, make sure you do it very gently and rub in the proper directions of your skin. And we're gonna go over what the proper methods of applying pressure onto our skin will be in the gua sha techniques. So I'm just stroking my skin gently, applying this oil. So I'm moving in an upward motion, upwards and outwards, making sure that everywhere is smooth and ready to gua sha. Before we start using the tools, I want to mention that I like to do each section about five to 10 times depending on how I'm feeling that day. So you can go ahead, make sure you're doing it on both sides. I'm just going to show you a quick demonstration of how I do it on each area. However, like I said, make sure you're counting and you're doing the proper amounts on each side so that both sides are equally drained and lifted. All right, so the stones that I have came in a pack of three. This one I find is the most similar to other ones I've seen online or easy to find. I also enjoy this one here. It is a little bit slimmer. It still has that edge there. And then this one here is a little bit more square. Again, I still like it. It has this edge here and then this is just a little bit more square. So I'm going to link these as well for you guys, but I'm going to use the one that I find is most commonly used or that you can find easily. All of them will work equally as good. So whatever gua sha tool you have or you choose to get doesn't make a difference. It's going to work in the same ways. So what we're gonna do is use this edge here, go in an upwards motion and drag up. And what we're doing is we're opening from the bottom to the top so that everything that drains will drain nicely and there won't be any blockage. So I'm going to angle it on an angle like so. And you want it to angle nicely so that you're going to be able to lift and pull it along your skin. You don't want to be like this on like a 90 degree angle to your skin. You want to be alongside your skin. So I'm not applying any pressure right now while I'm showing you because we want to work on the neck first. So if you need to tie your hair back or anything like that, I recommend doing that in the first few steps as well. So we're gonna get our tool and we're going to use this edge here to swipe upwards. And we're gonna make sure we angle. I'm still new to this, so sometimes I forget. Just try your best to use the proper techniques and angle it accordingly. With the combination of the oils and the gua sha stones, it's really going to reduce the appearance of your acne, it's going to make your skin brighter, and overall it's going to, of course, make your skin tighter and reduce the look of wrinkles. So I did the gua sha on my neck for a little bit there. Of course, like I said, count five to 10 times for each section. So I would do this area at least five times, move on to this area five times, five, five five okay so make sure you do that and now we're going to move on to this plane of our face here so it is a 
larger area. We're going to use the same side and the same tool. I pretty much use this side for the most part. And we're going to go along, but try to find your cheekbone and go right underneath it. So you can see here, this is my cheekbone. I'm going to just glide along. Again, keeping that angle and work your way up to your ear. So here we were working towards our jaw and now we're working along our face to our ear. And we always want to go outwards and upwards. Okay, and then you're gonna switch sides so you can keep the same hand and flip it or you can switch hands, whichever you prefer. Okay, so now that we have done the planes of our face, we're going to go in with the tool and this time we're gonna use the edge here where it meets in the middle. So this part right there. We're going to take that and this is gonna be for any areas that are a little bit more bony or angular. So we're going to keep the same angle. So like I said, pressing it against the skin with a little bit, I have a gap here, but I'm pressing it against the skin and pulling upwards. And I just follow my jawline and I do this five times. This part I don't enjoy as much just because I can feel the bone. I don't really love it, but it does help define your jawline. Okay, so once you've done that five to 10 times, we're gonna do it on the other side. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to move on to our cheekbones. So we've done the neck, so we've opened that up. We've done the jawline. We have done the planes of our face. So I like to do neck, planes, and then jawline just because we're using the same side for each so it makes it go a little bit faster. And then we switch to this here. And now we're going to do the cheekbones and kind of the under eye, but we're not gonna work too much on the eye just yet. So what I like to do is I like to take my tool, again, we're gonna use the little heart-shaped side, and I like to go from the inside of my nose almost, see how it aligns a little bit there? I'm gonna take that, I'm going to drag up and out towards my hairline. And you still want to be gentle you don't want to pull too much this area for me does get a little bit red just because it is a bonier area and for me this does also release a little bit of pressure in my face I tend to get lots of pressure in my neck and my head from my sinuses um, so releasing this area is definitely going to help with that and it's all going to flow down because we opened it up something else to note is when you follow this and you do it a few times you're going to have a routine which is going to be perfect because then you're going to remember all the areas and you're not going to forget anywhere so next we've done this area here here we just did the cheekbones and now we're going to move on we're going to do the nose for the nose or center area of your face i like to take the tool on the soft side so the rounded side and I'm going to go up my nose gently in the same angle that I was doing the rest of my face with so you want to be along your skin like I keep mentioning very important so you're going to take this and you're going to just go upwards gently 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 and here is where I press a little bit more and I just go up and this is where your 11 lines come in. So when you go like this, you see those lines there? We don't want that. So we want to take this and try to smooth that area out. So you can see that I do focus a little bit more up here as well because my nose is very bony already. So I don't find there's much drainage or anything that I can do on this top part. So now that I've done that, 
and worked my way up to the forehead and worked this area. And now I'm picturing which direction the fluid is going to go in. So if I was to push the fluid up, it's going to get stuck here and I'm going to have congestion there or anything like that. I don't want the fluids or anything to get stuck here. So I want to keep moving it. I don't use this side very often. I mainly use this side here because it just works with the shape of my face. Here it works. It even works here as well if you wanted to do it along your cheekbones. But I'm going to go on my forehead and I'm just starting in the center. And I'm working my way upwards and I just applying even pressure. And you wanna do each area five times like I've said, at least five times. Now I'm going to switch and I'm gonna start in the center again and go up and out, up and out. So while doing this, we're already getting into the eyebrow area. Something you can do is you hold here and you gently pull the eyebrow up and out to your hairline. And this is going to kind of give you a bit of a brow lift. Obviously these techniques will take time. So after doing it only a few times, you may not notice a huge difference. However, in the end, it will give you a more lifted look. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side here. And this isn't something I do every time, but if you are looking to lift your eyebrows or anything like that, you can give this technique a try. So now that we've just done the brow lift, holding our eyelid and pulling upwards, I'm just going to show you what I normally do on my brows um, when I don't do the brow lift method. So I just take my tool and I have the curved edge here and I'm going to be using this side here again for more of a bony part of my face. I'm going to take it from the center and I'm going to pull upwards and outwards. And this feels really nice on your temples as well. So pull it out towards your temples, hold it there for a minute and release. If you get any headaches, this might help with that as well. Again, I'm gonna do the same thing. So once you have completed that and you've done all your strokes on your eyes, we're going to just work on the under eye area and a little bit on the eyelids just to depuff. I'm going to take this tool here again. I'm just going to use this side because it fits my face really nicely. And this is going to be right up near my eye and be very gentle because this is a fragile area. If you want, you can hold the skin here just so it doesn't ripple or you can hold it here as well just to give it a little bit more of a grip and you're just going to pull it upwards and outwards like we do for the rest in this area i like to be extra gentle and i do this last you can do this without holding the skin as well if you are comfortable with that just like i said be very gentle and go upwards and outwards and then to finish it off, I just like to take the tool because it is nice and cool. And I just brush over my eyelids a little bit. And pull it out. I'm not really pulling or scraping hard enough to do anything. I'm just smoothing out the eyelid. And I do have oils on my tool from doing it on my face. So it's just going to apply a little bit of oil on my eyelid as well. And I just find that that's a nice way to end my gua sha. So that is going to be pretty much it for how I gua sha. I hope that this video informed you on how to gua sha. I'm not an expert, like I said, I am still learning. So if I do have any updates, I will definitely film another video. I also like to keep the oils on for as long as I possibly can. So until I shower or if I have already showered that day, then I will just leave the oils on. They're going to seep into your skin and it's just going to hydrate them and help with any other problem areas you have. 
I believe that is the end of the gua sha tutorial. If you enjoyed it, definitely let me know. If you are watching this video on my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe for more videos. So I will be linking my seven day results of doing gua sha from when I first started to seven days afterwards and letting you know kind of everything about how I enjoyed it and how it worked for me. I will have before and after pictures. So if you wanna see the results of gua sha after one week, then I will definitely leave that in the description down below. There's so much more information on the blog about the oils, the techniques, and my seven day results. So if you wanna see all that, you can definitely check out my blog down below as well. So. I hope you have an amazing day, week, month, or year. I love you and remember to always be nice to people.